Tammy and David Plache are learning this. A cross-country trip for these new parents meets with a little turbulence. Well, Michaela is, um, she's three and a half months old, and uh, this was her first plane ride and the first trip that we've actually taken, and so she has been healthy the whole time, but as soon as we took this plane trip, yep. then the next morning right after we got off the plane, she mm -hmm. was... Um, very ill. Ooh, get that nosy. The biggest problem I've seen with this has been the watery eyes, the runny nose, the coughing, uh, and I think it's starting to develop down into her chest, which that's where, that's when I become concerned. Did Michaela catch the cold while traveling? Tracking the spread of viruses is nearly impossible. Flying isn't always fun with a cold. Passengers leaving a flight may feel as if their cold has gotten worse. Here's why. Dehydration prompts the lining of the respiratory tract to produce more mucus. This, in turn, increases congestion. If you are planning a trip and your child is very ill and has ear or sinus pain or a high fever, it may be best to postpone your flight. If you need to travel and your child has a cold, there are some preparations that can help. Pack extra water. Remember that air on board planes is very dry. To avoid dehydration, have them drink plenty of fluids. For infants, bring pacifiers and bottles. The sucking helps equalize pressure in the ears. Lollipops can have the same effect. Pack those. Chewing gum works for older kids and adults. If the child is old enough, teach them how to equalize pressure by pinching the nose and gently blowing. For these ages, nasal sprays may help on takeoff and landing. Check with your pediatrician. In the battle against cold and flu bugs, hand washing should be the first line of defense. <laughs> Doctors agree it is one of the most effective ways of preventing the spread of certain diseases. Children should be taught to wash their hands before and after meals and after using the bathroom. They'll be grown before you know it, but until then, should you give your children medication intended for adults? The answer's coming up on Kids Health Works. Over-the-counter medications. They prove a maze for many parents. Is the dosage based on weight or age? Is it actually meant for children, and should your child take it? The labeling on a lot of children's over-the-counter medicines, cold medicines, um, fever medications is confusing to me and a lot of moms I've talked to. In fact, cold formulas and other over-the-counter medications can have an unpredictable effect on small children. As every parent knows, children are not just miniature adults. They do possess different characteristics and particularly with respect to the way they handle drugs. This is expressed in the child. His liver uh, metabolizes drugs differently. And one of the things that's actually very common in kids is that any drugs that may affect the central nervous system, the brain and, and the general nervous system, oftentimes have a paradoxical effect. Currently, about 75% of all medications marketed today do not carry FDA-approved labeling for use in children. For years, kids have been given smaller doses of adult medications. Usually, the medications prove beneficial to the child and there are no serious problems. But sometimes the consequences can be dangerous, even deadly. So the FDA is very concerned now, as are, I think, the medical community and the public health community is, is concerned that drugs that are used in children really are tested in kids to the extent possible. A network of hospitals and research facilities is working with the FDA on solutions. The ultimate goal is that all drugs prescribed for children be labeled for such usage. A birthday party bash meets with a few excited kids and happy parents. 
Through the years, all of these kids have been exposed to a variety of illnesses. In fact, children who've attended child care have a nearly 100% chance of acquiring RSV by their first birthday. Many kids will battle this cold-like illness for years, but it's the infants who are most susceptible to serious lung disease. Today, research is underway to help babies battle these illnesses early, with prevention beginning in the womb. Studies are looking at bolstering babies' immunity to such viruses as RSV by creating antibodies in pregnant women. In these studies, expectant moms receive vaccines. The goal is that the babies will benefit. Currently, it's well documented that women pass along influenza antibodies during pregnancy. This helps babies for the first six months. After six months, the antibodies given from mom begin to wear off.